Well, we kind of take pride on ourselves here at Market Advisory Group, adding more tools like Joshua and with tax planning or Gerald Eidelman, the, the uh, state planning attorney. We, add, we like to add more tools, not take less tools to the fight. Whatever job you're trying to commit uh, or t- trying to undertake, if you're trying to dig a hole, you don't want to take a, a claw hammer to that, that job. If you're trying to pound a nail, you don't want to use a shovel for that. You want to use the right tool for the right job. But you're handicapping yourself right off the bat if you say, I've only, my license only allows me to, s- to sell one type of product. And so, therefore, that happens to be the best thing for you. And we, we disagree. One of the first people I ever met with, um, a gentleman that was retiring back in uh, 2016, actually, I believe it was late 2015, early 2016, he had to delay his retirement by nearly nine years. And the reason being, his retirement party was planned for the end of 2007. At that point, his 401k was already down 18 to 20%. And he decided to cancel his retirement party and say, you know, I'll just wait. We'll take my advisor's advice in this circumstance and wait for it to come back. Well, six months later, it's down 30%. Another six months later, it's down 40. Another six months goes by, he's down 50%. And ultimately, it took him an additional nine years of work to wait for that account value to come back to where he was comfortable retiring again. And we have to understand in these market downturns, you've also got inflation and other things eroding the value of your money. I tell people all the time that even if you don't sell low, as Danny was referring to, and you wait and it comes back, you've lost one of two things in all market corrections or all market crises. You're either losing money or you're losing time or you're losing both, which is the worst circumstance to be in. How important is it to take a look at what future RMDs could do to someone's tax liability? It's vital. Uh, You need to be planning way ahead. Um, Oftentimes, people who are retiring in their early to mid 60s you realize you could have 10 years before you get there and you need to be planning that far ahead, uh, especially if you select a monthly pension from your company and that monthly pension is locked in for your life. It gives you no room to maneuver. And so you hit age 72 and suddenly you have this extra income that you didn't know about and it thrusts you into another tax bracket so um, that brings up a whole other uh, possibility in terms of how you deal with your pension, if you, in fact, have a choice to do so. Um, but required minimum distributions are something that oftentimes you, you tend to put off. But in truth, you need to plan way ahead. So now since Medicare enrollment is, is quickly approaching, like we've talked about, uh, let's kind of explain to some people if they call someone or if they reach out to someone, they might be hounded. And, and why is that? And, and maybe this like bait and switch talk, how we talk about um, they're getting people to want to contact them because of the rules for advertising for Medicare, right? Yes. These rules for advertising, most of the telemarketing calls that you get, they are, they are telemarketing Medicare supplements because the Medicare Advantage rules and Medicare prescription drugs fall under the same ruling. Uh, insurance agents are not allowed to reach out and contact you. We can send stuff in the mail. We can do advertisements, but but you have to actually contact us if you want to talk about Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plans. So those telemarketing calls that are coming to you, they generally are not bringing up Medicare Advantage. They're only going to talk to you about about Medicare supplements. You know, I met with some people that say, well, I think my attorney that I, I did my trust or my, my estate plan with years ago I think they're not even practicing where they're they're retired. Right, that can be a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I get a lot of plans from you know that have been sitting, that have been written a long time ago, and the attorney, the firm is no longer in business. Uh, and you know, one of the things you need to do uh, is, as time goes by, is to be you know, I tell people you need to review your uh, your trust, your uh, state plan documents every three to five years at least. Just to make sh- and, er- and earlier, of course, if there have been changes, uh, and that gives you an opportunity to build a relationship with an attorney that can be passed on to your children when they come up uh, to serve as the your agent, and they don't know what to do. So this client specifically had um, had a precious metal in an IRA type account. And um, they had it where it wasn't like certificates or, or shares or something. It was physical quantities of the precious metal inside the IRA. 
And the idea was that you can, you know, it'll go up and then you, when you sell it, you don't have to pay or in the, while it's going up, you don't have to pay taxes on the growth. <clears throat> and uh, their specific question was about getting it out and the taxation on actually receiving the, the physical substance. So they don't own it physically. They own it in storage somewhere in storage somewhere through their, their tax deferred IRA. And, um, I had to kind of rain on their parade a little bit and let them know that receiving physically receiving the, the material becomes a taxable event and whatever they receive, they have to pay tax on. 